Great. Hi, my name is Erin Pangalinen. Um, I'm going to be talking about designing data visualization in XR. Um, so a little bit about myself, um, why uh, I got into data viz. Um, I will define what that is, how it's distinct from big data visualization, uh, how to create various different types of data visualization, why it's important, not just because it's raising a ton of money with companies like Virtualytics, um, both for the web and also for native development. Um, so our goals today are really to understand data viz and XR. Um, what defines good data viz? Uh, familiarize yourself with different use cases. I talk a little bit about biotech and uh, health tech and learn new ways to create data visualization uh, that people haven't necessarily seen a lot before. Um, so who am I? Very briefly, um, my name is Aaron. I'm one of the co-founders of ARVR Academy. Shout outs to my co-founder, Suzanne Lieber, who's in the audience. Uh, we teach augmented reality and virtual reality to women in underrepresented under communities. Uh, there's our other third co-founder, uh, Liv Erickson, in her picture. Um, I'm also one of the co-founders of Faster, Filipino Americans in STEAM, Silicon Valley. So we've actually brought VR to all the different colleges um, in the Bay Area. Um, so my background is very non-traditional. Uh, I actually spent about five years in public policy. Um, I worked for Congressman Ro Khanna, uh, who at the time was running for office. Uh, and I was focused on data science and pretty much why everyone hates, I guess, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. I was trying to figure out the same, but for underrepresented communities who are Asian American, doing data mining and figuring out how to do voter outreach. Um, Four years ago, I left that uh, job and that whole other career, uh, and I went to my first big data hackathon. I thought I was going to co-found my first big data company, and I fell in love with VR uh, very shortly after uh, in 2015. So this is me and my hackathon team. Uh, one of the data visualizations I actually fell in love with the most, my favorite framework, which is D3.js. How many people have heard of D3? Um, so a JavaScript library that was created by Michael Bostock. Uh, if you know of his work, he created a lot of the data visualizations for uh, things like in the New York Times. Uh, 50 scenarios to the White House between Mo John McCain and Obama. Uh, his framework's used frequently uh, with A-Frame, which how many people know what A-Frame is? In VR, great, awesome. So in WebXR, um, like what that all looks like. But to really just set the tone, since not everyone here, how many folks are, are data visualization like actual creators? Or data scientists, machine learning um, engineers? or more, most folks in AR, VR, content creators. Okay, so uh, how many people have heard of Edward Tufte? Um, well, that's a good amount. Okay, so one of the things that Edward Tufte really touches on, um, if you read uh, one of his seminal books, is talking about data viz um, in 3D, even looking at maps. So one of my first um, experiences in VR was on Google Cardboard, and I looked at it with Star Wars, but it was at Google Map Toberfest. I didn't even know what a cardboard was back then. Um, but if you look at what was then and now, on the below screen, uh, the very bottom is a, a Google Cardboard visualization of how many people located where hate Piers Morgan, very random, uh, but it's in A-frame and D3.js. Um, so what data viz does, and obviously this is a very experiential uh, type of data visualization, is uh, reveal different insights. This is one of Edward Tufte's like, key um, principles for data visualization. Um, for me, I'm really focused on real big data, how we define big data, we will talk about that a little bit more, and structured data with planned information architecture. It isn't random, a lot of what you see right now in data viz, I'm not going to name names, is really bad UI and does not load in real time and it's very random and if you ask someone uh, how they created it, they can't give you a straight answer on how the data loads, which I take you know, pretty, pretty hard that it's not real data visualization. Um, so I agree with Tufty. You're supposed to show data. Um, it's supposed to serve a very clear purpose uh, for anything that you do. Data viz is very much a B2B uh, sort of um, application with use cases, you know, like I mentioned, health tech and biotech. Um, it's clear that it's there, uh, not just for decoration, although graphical excellence, as Edward Tufty calls it, is very important. Important. Um, and you're integrating this with both descriptive um, sort of like words as well as different statistics. So there's a huge grounding with the data science community and statisticians that look at uh, data visualization to really aid um, understanding how that all works. So the one thing I disagree with Edward Tufte on um, is that he believes that the viewer should not really care about the methodology graphic design or the technology of the graphic 
uh, technical production. Um, I strongly disagree with that, mostly because a lot of this is very much obsolete and outdated. Um, a lot of the old infographic data viz methodologies you'll read about will talk about a single screen, but in AR and VR, you're in a 3D space, and so you should optimize for that. Um, it also involves a lot of interactions that I don't think you were able to do before with a 2D screen. So we should actually think about not only the substance of what we're creating, but how we actually create it. Um, so just some quick data viz uh, principles. Um, if y'all have seen uh, Salesforce has great principles. They talk about clarity. Um, a lot of data visualization has so much noise, it's not clear like what is going on. Um, you're looking at relational data, whether it's you know uh, stuff that's uh, like charts and graphs, scatter plots, maps, et cetera. Um, and it's accessible. I think this is one of the key things that here at this conference we're talking a lot about the future of interaction design in XR, whether you're doing it with haptics, voice, controls. Um, a lot of data viz is still very inaccessible. You'll see menus with like 10 different UI just explaining how to do something, and that's not very good UI. Um, so good data viz, um, I think, uses the 3D space. Um, it's intuitive. It doesn't need a ton of instruction. And it also, if you know John Maida's work, who is, um, used to be a designer in residence at Kleiner Perkins, he just came out with a great report, Design in Tech, where he talks about AR, VR, and AI, and how design is changing. Um, but you're supposed to save your users the time with really simple UI. So if you're having trouble like learning how to use a data viz, then that's probably because it's poorly designed, and that is bad. <laughs> um, big data visualization is not, and this is a lot of the stuff that I've tried. Um, so at my one of my first tech conferences, in AI with Strata Data, there was a VR application, I think from Altspace, and I'd asked them, how did you make this data viz? They just said, oh, it randomly just loads in the web. And I would hardly call that big data. Data scientists are often tasked with petabytes of data at scale, millions, billions of users in real time. That does not translate well. Um, so it's not just something randomly that loads. It could be called a data viz, but I would put it into the category of infographic. Um, much of the data that you see, especially I've seen it overused in Microsoft HoloLens, is flat UI, it doesn't load in real time, there's almost no interactivity, and there's so much noise you don't even understand what's going on. So there's a lack of form and function. Here's something actually really simple from the A-frame team. Um, it's just a plain scatter plot, and what you see here on the right hand side is uh, an A-frame uh, embedded scene, and it's loading a JSON file. Pretty simple, you know, that's really like a JSON file that that could have been, I don't know, like a SQL table of genomics data for all I care. It's something very simple, but it works. Would I call it a big data visualization? Not necessarily, but I would call it a data visualization because it is simple, it can be interactive if you're using this um, in a headset, um, and it's understandable. This is another data visualization from Canada. Can anyone see what's wrong <laughs> with this UI? Just shout it out. It's very static, it's flat. Um, I don't know what things are, and there's a million, like a lot of different labels, like I don't even know which, which is what. Um, bad use cases I've seen. Um, so I, I mentioned before I talk about a little bit of health tech and biotech. So uh, a lot of people have used things in HoloLens where it's completely non-relational. They'll say it's, oh, it's brain tractography to understand the brain. But there is no interactivity um, with the user on haptics. Um, it's restricted to taking a essentially three-dimensional data that is flat, reconstructing it in a 3D environment, saying it's animation and calling it a data visualization. I would argue that it's not. Uh, this right here is a little bit better. So this is a, a tractography image from a different company. And it's coded, color coded, but that doesn't mean it's data visualization. Um, TensorFlow, which is a machine learning framework from Google, also has a really great um, Teasney sort of um, visualization. So if folks know of how many people have heard of the term dimensionality, uh, the curse of dimensionality reduction, it's like a really big term. Um, so basically what that means is there's lots of different types of data. Um, and within like that, it's so hard to understand uh, that we have to scale it down, even into 3D to understand it. Uh, so TensorFlow and Distill.pub, uh, that's another machine learning publication, they've done a good job about um, understanding data visualization, making it interactive, even if it's in 2D and not in VR. Um, types of data, like I mentioned before, there's a pre-processing pre-processing pipeline for a lot of health tech, biotech data, 3D reconstruction, and intuitive animation. So 
briefly outside of like this horrible infographic on information architecture, which basically says you parse a bunch of stuff in Python for brain data, um, you throw it into a Cython wrapper, put it into C Sharp, C++, Unreal Engine, or Unity, depending on the headset, depending on um, what type of experience you want. And then you can come up with, let's see if I can play that. Let me see if I could go back. Let me see if we can play that video back there. So this is actually, um, a medical um, surgery application out of University of Toronto. Would you be able to play that back there? I don't think I have that functionality here. This is the one thing I do want to show because I know I had a couple of videos. No. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, in, in that visualization, you're really looking at uh, a 3D reconstruction of it, whether it's an MRI or other anatomical structures in VR, and what you're able to do there versus anywhere else, um, if you're thinking about radiologists, is that you're able to cut your time in half, um, locating tumors, things of that nature, um, and you can pretty much uh, make it much more efficient with data viz. Um, it isn't a scatter plot or a graph or chart, but the way that data scientists, a lot of other researchers within the biotech and health tech industry consider that a data visualization because they're not using um, outdated software like things like MATLAB, and they're able to understand their data better and faster because it's in AR and VR. This right here is one of my favorite data visualizations by my friend Rostin Murphy. Uh, he used to be at IBM as one of their lead engineers and had created um, Twitter, sentiment, Twitter sentiment analysis loading big data in real time uh, via Apache Spark on the HoloLens. Um, so he spoke at Spark Summit a couple of years ago, and so this is him doing the interaction. What was great about this is that it was intuitive, it truly was big data, uh, but the big pain point had to do with UX. Um, just because uh, the way that he coded it was in a Jupyter Notebook, and he had to go back and forth between editing the Jupyter Notebook in Python while going back into the headset. So even if he was in reality, and arguably augmented reality, it was still hard to, to go through that. Um, and the last thing I would show, how many people have heard of Adam Gazelli's lab and, and Glassbrain at Meta? Not so much. So I would Google this and take a look at this because I guess some of the, the videos are not working. Um, but what this is is actually uh, diffusion tensor imaging and MRI imaging in real time loading of a, a drummer playing uh, the drums. Uh, it was like a famous band member. And so they have this in the meta. And it's really interesting because I think a lot of the neuroscience community, um, especially folks in brain computer interfaces in VR, are developing new ways of looking at data uh, that they're reconstructing in VR. And they're putting toge uh, together EEG, a bunch of other data with you know, uh, scatter plots, graphs, et cetera, that haven't been able to be done before. Uh, this is the last couple of slides that I have. Other, uh, this is actually from the blog post from uh, IBM. Uh, so I would take a look at that if you are interested. Uh, this sort of data visualization that they're doing um, is really looking at two-dimensional data. They made 3D, um, and they were inspired, obviously, also by Google's machine learning framework, TensorFlow. Uh, this is another great one from Meta that they have analyzing uh, charts in 3D as well. Um, my last one that I really like, it's one of my favorites, um, it's actually a student. So for a lot of people who work in health tech and biotech, um, Data is very restrictive from uh, FDA approval, HIPAA compliance. I myself struggle with this where I'm waiting on approval of data that's post-mortem brains, meaning people who are not beholden to clinical trials who are already dead with Alzheimer's. Getting their data and visualizing that in AR running it through machine learning modules, even to acquire that is difficult, but that shouldn't stop you from creating data viz, even if you are in that industry. So what this student did was basically index every single page of the internet, um, wrote it in Java after he did everything ugly in PHP, um, and then used Unreal Engine Blueprint uh, to create this data visualization. So what I argue is that anyone can actually create data visualizations, um, no matter what stack and no matter what field. Um, one of the key other things I wanted to mention, because uh, I, I talked about biotech before, is that Unreal Engine actually had a big data hackathon a couple of years ago. And so the winning team actually had a genomics browser that analyzed fruit fly data. Obviously, I mentioned before, you see sort of the flat UI with a chart and table. But what's interesting that you see on the side is that they look at a lot of different types of data in 3D. The way that they're mapping uh, UI and charts is very, very different than what you would do in 2D just because you have a 3D space. So I would definitely 
take a look at this project, check it out. Um, you can see it on YouTube and it's also in 360. Um, and that's just a taste of different types of uh, data visualization that people have created um, that are doing really big things in VR. Um, the last ones, I think I mentioned uh, sagittal slicing and, and looking at brains in VR. I'd done this demo by, a, I think it was a Swiss or was a Czech company last year at NVIDIA's GTC, uh, the GPU um, tech conference. And so they're saving the time from having to uh, segment a lot of data in 2D by being able to cut that um, in half uh, within um, augmented and virtual reality. So that was me on HTC Vive. Uh, just because this, short, uh, this uh, session, session is really short and I wasn't able to uh, give you a full tutorial of everything, I would refer to a lot of these key people. If you are a you know, front-end developer, you can get started uh, right now in DataViz. I know that the A-Frame team has worked really hard um, and also Super Medium on a new browser um, and looking at different UI that we're creating. Uh, Charlie Fink mentioned this yesterday where, you know, what is the browser of the future going to be? Who's going to paint that browser? I think they're leading the way for WebXR as much as you know, it's maybe not as caught up in terms of standards as you know other parts of the Kronos community. They are working very hard at that. A lot of folks in the A-Frame team have done that. Uh, my favorite people that I follow are good friends of mine. Ian Johnson, who's at Google, leads the D3JS meetup. Uh, Angelot, uh, Kevin No, who left um, Mozilla, is now at Super Medium. He has really great data visualizations on A-Frame that you can take a look at on GitHub. Uh, Mike Stubbs, who used to be a data scientist at H2OAI. Um, and you can use Block Builder to start off creating data visits even if all you know is HTML, CSF, CSS, and JavaScript. For my machine learning data scientist folks who are a little bit more advanced than that and want to do something different, um, I would encourage you to look at Google. Uh, Hark, which is a YC um, arm, a research arm, they have a machine learning journal with great data visualization with Chris Ola from Google. Uh, he collaborates frequently with Ian, uh, so I would check out uh, the distill.pub. Any article um, by them is amazing. Uh, and Pudding. Pudding is a, a great, also sort of an infographic data journalist uh, sort of organization, but the way that they explore data um, is very different than anything else I've seen. So um, they incorporate things like YouTube and music, and they're starting to experiment a little bit with VR. I think that's still a little bit new for them, um, but for anyone that's starting off, you know, they're already in VR, AR, MR, XR, whichever part of the stack you're in. You're already a front-end developer or you know, data scientist or whatnot, but you don't necessarily understand data viz. These are some great resources to point to um, to really just get your grounding on best practices from other folks. Um, the last one I would mention, as much as I hate their diversity policies, is Uber. Uber's uh, DeckGL uh, had a great talk at Silicon Valley Virtual Reality, the meetup recently. Um, and so I would check them out to see what they're doing because they're handling lots of data in real time. Um, geospatial data um, with maps. So um, I would definitely recommend them. And I think that's time, so I can take questions if there's any.